I've actually been wanting to record reaction videos on my channel for quite a while now. So after you've watched this video, let me know, do you want to see more reactions from me? Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is David Franco. I've been a content creator on YouTube technically since 2005. I have a first channel, which whatever, we're not we're not going to talk about that. Or who knows, maybe I'll react to that someday. Let me know in the comments right below. Anyway, I've been on this YouTube channel since 2006 and I'm incredibly grateful for that. I am by no means a pro tech reviewer and I will never ever be a pro tech reviewer because honestly, I don't really want to be. I like being me. I enjoy being myself. I enjoy vlogging and doing the occasional tech review. But that doesn't mean I don't love tech. I love tech. I mean, I'm quite literally surrounded by tech every single day. And to be able to express my love for tech on YouTube, well, it's important for me. And while that love expression, whatever you want to call it, did start way back in here, this was my first tech video ever, guys. I mean, my first tech review, I should say. It was my review of the Koosh. A headset for the iPhone, first of all, the name Koosh is terrible because it sounds like Cooch. In other words, vagina. I apologize, but I had to get that out of the way. Koosh, like even since 2008, I've been thinking what a horrible name. But what's cool about this product is it's the first electronic product ever from BIC, you know, B-I-C, the pen company. Yes, a pen company making a headset. So I, I don't know if BIC still does that stuff nowadays, but hey, anyway, let's go full screen, guys, and let's react to my first ever tech review. How bad was it? Here we go. All right, right off the bat, this is something I don't do anymore. I don't put my titles in the actual video anymore because that title could change. You know, I mean, I'm always changing titles, whether they're tech review titles or vlog titles. Yeah, so are you, David, here. It is Saturday, <sighs> November 15th, 2008. I believe the anniversary of the Xbox 360. Listen to this. No, Xbox One. Sorry, first Xbox. Xbox One. Did David do some time traveling without realizing it? And yes, I've already watched this portion because I wanted to do a test recording for ScreenFlow, and plus I was showing my patrons and the patrons only of Locati Vlog. So yeah, I've seen bits and pieces of this, but I haven't watched the entire video in a long time. Anyway, let's, let's observe what's going on here. First of all, the hair. David, do you not believe in styling your hair or at least trying to make yourself somewhat presentable and guys check out that tube tv right behind me fun fact my mom bought me that tube tv from i believe walmart or somewhere for really cheap mainly because i wanted to play animal crossing city folk on my wii hence the sensor bar right there yes that right there is a wii sensor bar oh oh my god look way down here that's the dock for my iPod 5th generation. And that black thing you see on the front of the dock is the IR receiver. Uh, because even back then, we kind of had like Apple remotes and stuff like that. Just for making playback. Okay, anyway, let's go. Totally off topic. Mr. Spacebar. Anyway, I'm here to do a product review. Um, I was sent the Koosh headphones, um, courtesy of buzzparadise.com and Koosh.com for actually making the pro uh, product. And basically what it is, is it's... <sighs> Guys, another fun little fact about me, and this is, this is more interesting and very personal, but I don't mind sharing this with you because perhaps you went through the same thing. I had speech therapy as a kid in um, elementary school, maybe kindergarten, first grade, second grade, I forget. But every now and then, my speech therapy teacher, or whatever sh she would be called, would take me out of class and teach me how to speak more fluently. And back then as a kid, I thought that was normal. I mean, I, I didn't I didn't really think much of it. And even to this day, the biggest thing by far that I hate about myself, and yes, hate's a strong word, but I mean it, is my speech. I, I, I wish I spoke more fluently. I still stutter over the stupidest words and consonants or whatever you want to call it. And I have an extreme fear of public speaking when it comes to like giving speeches. But when it comes to like hanging out with crowds of friends, I'm completely comfortable, you know? Uh, but anyway, I'm just gonna throw that out there because you might see me do some weird things uh, with, with, with my face and that's how I 
coped with my speech therapy where I, I don't know, like I'll do some physical things to cover up my, um, okay, here we go. It's for the iPhone, iPod, Blackberry, Zune, whatever you use. Blackberry, Zune. That's most funny. works with it. So this video, um, I'm going to give my thoughts about what I thought about it. I use it all week going to you hear and that? from class. You hear that? That's that's part of my speech problem is I hesitate between words sometimes. Listen to this. Um, I'm going to give my thoughts. I'm going to give my thoughts and I kind of like move my eyes to the side. Now back then I didn't really believe in cutting out my video, but nowadays you better bet your booties yes, I do mess up in my speech all the time, all the time. But then again, what kind of YouTuber doesn't make cuts? It's just part of the process. Oh, and by the way, my speech has gotten much better. Like I've gotten so much better over the years. I'm still not to the point where I'm happy with myself about it, but I've definitely improved quite a bit. I thought about it. I use it all week going to and from class since I use my iPhone on a daily basis. Obviously, since it's a phone. What iPhone is that? And so yeah, let's get started right away. Wait, first 2008. So would that have been the first gen iPhone I still had? Probably. I will talk about the case design. The Kush arrived in a very minimal, nice case. A very Apple-like case, very- I still say the word minimal a lot nowadays. I just love it. I guess classy type case. It's very small. Um, it's definitely green friendly. Hence, only plastic and it doesn't take up that much um, extra plastic that it should. If that even makes sense. And it comes on this little canister, which is pretty neat. It sits in here. And it was actually sitting on a fake ear, which I thought was pretty cool. At least it looked like an ear. You pop it off, and you can see that there's an arm, arm, an orange rubber trim around here, which is a nice little touch because... It actually is a nice design you know, for packaging. That isn't necessarily necessary. I just said that twice. But it is a nice... That's called redundancy, David. Keep it going. Touch to have a nice little rubber grip on there, and I'm a person that pays attention to little details like that. So I, I still say that really nowadays. Cool. That's so funny. And that's pretty but much how it, it came. And the overall product design is not your usual earbuds. These are the type that go by the product's tagline: "Stays on." I feels think they kind of loop. That's yeah. the quote for this product lineup. And basically, Ooh, so I did make a cut. Oh, go David, go David. Oh, you're making strides here, buddy. Wait, so if, if I if I cut there, why didn't I cut before when I messed up in my speech? I don't know. They actually wrap around your ear. You put them on like regular earbuds, but then you wrap, you, uh, wrap the piece around your ear. So it stays on, it feels good. And it does feel pretty good. You can put the left one in the left. And I will show you how they look. Sorry, that's my iPhone. Oh my god, I forgot about that sound. And this is the overall design. I mean, I think the iPhone headphones that came with the iPhone look better because they're less obtrusive. Definitely. But these do stay on. They don't look too bad. It would have been nice if they were kind of transparent, but they come in I agree, uh, white, Pass David. I agree. Pink. So hmm. male and female, you both have your choices. You, you know what's fascinating about this? My taste in product design hasn't really changed all that much, and I think that's a good thing, you know? Like, I've, I've always enjoyed minimal product design in simplicity, you know? That's a, that's a good word, simplicity. And also included is the onboard microphone for basically taking phone calls via your iPhone, Blackberry, or whatever else you use. And it worked very well. I couldn't test the microphone too much, but I did call somebody and ask them how it sounded, and they said it. They said it sounded. That's somebody meaning my mom. Come on. Fine. So I'm guessing it's good enough to use on a daily basis, and it's an um, onboard microphone. Side notes: I really miss that lamp. Uh, that was that was a cool lamp. You could like bend all the lights. And back here, if you look closely, I believe that's one of my fake LED candles, which is really cool. Fun fact: another fun fact about me. Um, we actually got in trouble for using real candles in the in the window because it's a fire hazard for obvious reasons. You know, I was I was an idiot. We we didn't get like fined or anything. I don't I don't think we did. It was just a warning. So I busted out some LED candles. And by the way, this this is my college apartment. I don't know if I mentioned this before. This is my second college apartment. Above me is my bed. So it's kind of like a loft design with the beds up top, which I loved actually. It was it was always fun trying to get up there when drunk. 
and scary at the same time. And of course, underneath my bed is my dresser. And obviously what I'm looking at right now is my computer, which by the way is my 2006 Mac Pro. Loved it. So it's kind of hard to screw up. And I didn't, I didn't really notice anything different from the iPhone headset that I currently use. I can't show it right now because it's over there. And I don't feel like leaving the camera. So overall, it is nice. The only thing I did not like... I do miss looking that thin. I gotta, I gotta lose some weight. The microphone is actually... Um, it does not have an onboard <laughs> volume control. Which I was kind of... Nice. It's Don't so awkward. Watch. I did not like about the microphone is actually, um, Durr. it does not have an onboard <laughs> volume control, which I was kind of hoping for, That's and I was so very funny. disappointed to see that it did not have an onboard volume control, cause cause the ones that come with the iPhone because um unfortunately do not include the volume control. However, the ones that Apple's coming out with pretty soon they do have an onboard, but this one does not. And if you listen. Let me make a shake. You hear that plastic sound? They're shaking. Hmm. That is the plastic piece on the microphone itself, because this actually has some ex um, extra. It um, actually has a button <laughs> for pausing and playing your music, and you can skip to the next or previous song. It's so bad. It once to pause, twice to skip forward, and three times to skip back. Nothing really new here, since the iPhone headset already does this, but it is a nice touch. However, the plastic feels a little cheap. I feel they could have done a better job. And the rattling you hear from the button kind of got distracting. Uh Even today, that would drive me crazy. When, when wearing headphones, there should be no moving parts whatsoever. And if there are moving parts, keep them silent. While I was listening to my music. No excuse for that. If you're walking la or Lazy running, design. Lazy, lazy design. This thing will make a lot of noise. And like I said, I pay attention to detail. So I just kind of found that annoying. However, it's not that big of a deal. That's just my personal preference. Overall, this and there's the positive side of me. I've always been like that, even to this day. Every time I mention a negative with a product review, most of the times I should say, I usually try to balance it out with a positive. That's just how my mind works. Quality is good for the um, headphones price range, which is about $20. Um, I didn't really notice a $20? big difference from that's cheap. the Koosh versus the iPhone headset. That is so cheap. But that's pretty much to be expected because it's the $20 headset and they all pretty much sound the same. Um, especially in the terms of bass performance. Bass was definitely lacking. There was a little bit of bass, but th you just, I don't know, obviously shouldn't expect much from Spit a Spit it out, David. Like Spit it if out. If you're paying 20 bucks, you're going to get what you pay for. But if you buy $100 earphones, headphones, earbuds whatever you want to call them, then you should pretty much expect good bass. But but from these, expect average sound um, quality performance. My God, David. Okay, so overall, I would Ooh. say the Koosh headset is definitely worth looking into Another as jump a gift cut. for somebody. But if you are already using the iPhone headset or another headset that has the same features as this, like an onboard microphone and extended playback control, then I wouldn't suggest ditching your current headset just yet for the Koosh. But if you're looking for a nice alternative with a wraparound um, design like the Koosh has, then I would suggest getting it. I guess it comes down to personal preference. Overall, the sound quality is pretty much the same. It has the same set of features. It all just comes down to comfort-wise, and these are pretty comfortable. Also, real quick, I can't believe I forgot to mention uh -oh. this. What? What? One what? thing I really did not like about the Koosh is, sure, it does stay on. Mm-hmm. And trust me, it's very hard for this to fall off because it's wrapped around your ear. Yeah. So if you're like dancing or whatever, whatever you do in your life. Oh, okay, okay. This thing is definitely not going to fall off unless you fall down a flight of stairs, which is pretty much doubtful. <laughs> That's funny. And if you do, I'm sorry to hear that. However, hey, it, it does funny. stay on, but this piece does oh, kind yeah. of slip out. It like floats which is out. kind of annoying. So in a way, this piece is kind of pulling out the butt itself. Yeah, interesting. So I found that kind of annoying. I agree, Pass David. But then again, I'm picky about my products. Rightfully so. And not to repeat myself, but overall, the Koosh is definitely worth it. I'm just not good at making these videos about reviews, which is why I encourage you to check out my blog, mm -hmm. thecreativeone.tv. The link is over there on the side. I don't have that anymore. Oh, and look, I'm pointing to the side. YouTube doesn't do that anymore. For the OG YouTubers out there, 
Pretty sure you recall we had the video player on the left and on the right side was a video description with the subscribe button and all that stuff. But nowadays it's video description, which in my opinion is obviously the better way to go. Video, the right side of this video. And I'm better at talking about products in the form of words from a keyboard rather rather than my voice because I tend to talk too much. So please check out that article, I mean that blog post if, if you are interested. And do check out the Koosh headset at Koosh. Dot com. It sells for $19.99 Is .com even a thing? I believe they ship worldwide. I'm not totally sure. I'm going to check soon. Why not? And it works perfectly fine with the iPhone, iPod, BlackBerry, and any other um, music device that has music playback, obviously, and phone functionality, like talking on it. Oh, my God, David. So, Just go to bed. Go to bed. Um, check it out, Koosh.com, and check out my website, thecreativeone.tv. Thanks for watching. No, David. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Okay. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a like. So let me go to Koosh.com. Where does it go? Oh, it doesn't. Website expired, dude. That's a Squarespace website. Very, very interesting. What if we go to archive.org and try to go to Koosh.com? Let me see what happens here. Koosh.com. And let's go back to 2008. Yeah, whoa. Okay, see, this is so fascinating. Obviously, their traffic was highest, or most changes. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that bar is. Probably changes. Uh, it was, it was highest around 2008. And yeah, I realized I just said most highest before. Come on, David. So let's let's check out the website. Snapshots and loading. Redirecting the coming soon. Oh, I made this video in November, didn't I? I did. So let's go, stop it. Let's go to November 20th, 2008. And the website should have been live then. Archive.org is fascinating for anyone who, who has never used it. It's really, really cool to quite literally go back in time with, with the internet. Wow, yeah, look at this. Kush.com stays on, feels good. Dude, holy crap. It is so funny to see that. Wow, I didn't, I didn't expect to do that today. Anyway, guys, there you have it. My reaction to my very first tech review ever. It was a little cringe, but honestly, I think it could have been worse. And of course, if there's any videos that you want me to react to, just Post a URL right below or tweet me, Instagram me, whatever. Reach out to me and I'll check it out. I mean, I'm really, really into um, just these viral videos of like, I, I make so-and-so each year because I've been watching a lot of Graham Stephan. He's a great guy. And, and well, honestly, he's the one who inspired me to do this. And shout out to my dude, Logan. He does a lot of reaction videos too. I'll link his channel right below. Check him out. We're always playing together on YouTube. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Um, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Thanks for watching.